John here, and welcome to a series of uh, videos about the cars, or some of the cars I've owned from my very first car, and some of the interesting ones I've had to the car I currently have, which is uh, standing right behind me, or rather parked right behind me. This is an addition to the series uh, English Just For You because it's going to be um, in English completely. So I hope you enjoy it and if you have any comments or feedback just just uh, write or mention it in the comments. So hope you enjoy the series. Thank you. The Triumph 2000, 2.5, 2500 is a mid-sized rear-wheel drive car produced in Coventry by the Triumph Motor Company between 1963 and 1977. It was introduced on the 15th of October 1963. Larger engine models known as the Triumph 2.5 BI petrol injection and the Triumph 2500 were also produced from 1968. The 2000 used the six-cylinder uh, engine, the straight six, first seen in the standard Vanguard at the end of 1960. Standard transmission on the original car was a four-speed manual gearbox, overdrive and Borg Wagner type 35 three-speed automatic transmission too. The unitary body had independent suspension all round with semi-trailing semi arms at the rear, all using coil springs. Hi, John. Welcome to Lucky Losers. Um, welcome to anybody who is watching my videos for the first time. And to all Lucky Losers subscribers, thank you to, for staying by. Um, I'm really grateful for that. Today then, um, I'm going to talk about uh, another one of my cars. The first uh, such uh, episode was about a year ago on my first car. So I finally come round to making another video. This time about the second car which I had, which is this beauty. Um, if you don't live in the UK or in other countries where this car was popular, such as Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, um, and other colonies, ex-British colonies, you won't know that this is a Triumph 2000. Um, or could be a Triumph 2500. Well, it's a, let's call it a Triumph 2000, and it is uh, a complete replica of the one I had, uh, including the registration number. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. I'll tell you a little bit about where I got this uh, um, model from, actually. Um, so, how I came about to own a Triumph 2000, uh, it was uh, actually April Fool's Day, 1988. So that was 32 years ago almost. And well, the, the story was that my father's friend uh, told my father about the fact that his son had an old Triumph in London standing idle in some urban street uh, for a few months or he wasn't planning to come back. So that car was uh, available if anybody wanted it. It'd been standing under some uh, trees as I mentioned in West London for some time um, so the bodywork took on a matte appearance so um, drove to London with my father and the man my father's friend showed me the car and of course I took it um, drove it back to Swindon with a drive of over one hour and needless to say 
one of the first jobs I needed to do on the car was to gloss clean it, get rid of the mat. And I also noticed on the way home that the speeder was a bit faulty. Um, however, it was something I never got to rectify. I don't remember whether it was showing too high a speed or too low a speed. I think it was too low a speed, but anyway. Um, I never did rectify that problem, mainly because I didn't know how to. I'm not much of a mechanic. In fact, I'm not a mechanic at all. Uh, trips. Um, I had the car for, I think, two years, almost three. So there were countless trips in the south of England to various the seaside resorts uh, like Brighton, Weymouth, Western Supermare, and a drive. I think the longest drive was to Snowdonia National Park in North Wales. So, and of course, I used it to work every day. Um, so it wasn't it was a working car at that time. It was let's say it could be considered a modern classic. Yeah, there you go. I'll just show you it. Um, there are photos of the car a little bit further on in the video, the one I actually had. Um, on the plus side, uh, the car was very comfortable, a smooth drive, just complete elegance. It felt like, I just felt like an, an English countryman. Uh, that's the feeling I really got uh, in that car. So it, it gave you that kind of feel good. I wouldn't say snob factor, but uh, that kind of thing that you're driving a beauty, yeah. It's a roomy car, very spacious, with a really nicely decorated, richly decorated interior, wooden panels on the uh, door, for example. So paneling on the dashboard, the dashboard was wooden and it was genuine wood with a large boot. And it had four gears plus overdrive. And overdrive is a kind of a switch in the middle of the gear lever, which you could change down to fifth gear or change back up. I think you could even do it um, in third gear. You could use the um, overdrive. <coughs> Excuse me. On the minus side, well, fuel consumption was an issue. Um, I think it barely did 20 miles per gallon. So that's something like 13 litres per 100. A bit difficult to drive around town, hence there was no power steering in those cars. I don't know if any of the better models had power steering. 2000 TC, the TC actually stands for twin carb. So in those days cars didn't have direct injection, direct fuel injection. Uh, some cars, maybe the most expensive ones did, but mine, uh, cars like mine, had a twin carburetor, so you would have to start the cold engine on the choke, get some oil in uh, before it could run, and then, um, of course, put back the choke. I think I've said that properly. Um, did I have any problems? Uh, well, yeah, I did. Unfortunately, the clutch went. Uh, luckily, through the Triumph 2000 owner's register, I managed to acquire a new clutch at a reasonable price. I think it was £75 that was fitted, and after that, there were no issues with that. Uh, during one journey, a fan belt coupling fell out, and the engine temperature went haywire, so it overheated, and I was hauled to a nearby garage by AA Relay. I think it's still going, I think. I know that the heater didn't work for some time. So the interior was cold, I think my father simply re replaced the fuse. He never used to tell me how he repaired it, any of, uh, how any of the repairs were done. He was just saying, well, I think yourself lucky you've got me, and I could repair things for you. Um, I've got uh, books about Triumph. Uh, I was looking for some brochures um, as well, and... The only thing that I've got is this model, which I acquired at this, uh, from Chalk, actually, which I acquired at the Birmingham NEC during the 1990 um, that classic car exhibition. You'll see some photos from that, and there's just one of me, which I've just uploaded to Facebook. 
All right, so have a look at that. Um, I ought to mention, sorry about that. I ought to mention uh, what happened to my Triumph. Well, uh, I was getting it ready for an MOT and uh, I gave my eldest brother the job of welding, I think, uh, two parts. Um, I think between the two wheels or under the wheel arch or something or other and I think it caught fire um, and that effectively it didn't cause too much damage but the back seat and the car was a little bit beyond repair perhaps with a bit of willpower I uh, it could have been done and I could have driven that car for longer but well with that happening I decided to break the car so I took it to a breaker's yard I don't remember how much I got for it maybe 50 pounds shame really shame I do regret it um, and what's left of it two remnants triumph 2000 TC I did I think take the registration plates off as well I don't know where they are so that's all that's left of the car I drove and I think it was one of the best cars I ever had so the rest um, you can check out um, about the Triumph 2000 some photos um, in this video so that just leaves me to say uh, thank you for viewing hope you enjoyed it I hope to uh, make a similar video about the, another car that I had in the UK I don't live in the UK anymore so I hope to make a similar video soon, not leave it a year as I did so here. Um, don't forget to press the like button, comment if you will, um, add anything you wish. And if you're not a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for tuning in, lucky losers. <sighs>
Various models were assembled in South Africa with the later 2500TC and 2500S being badged Triumph Chicane in that market between 1973 and 1978. In New Zealand, CKD production of the Triumph 2000 continued at New Zealand's Motor Corporation's Nelson plant with 2500S models until March 1979. The 2000 was assembled in Australia by Australian Motor Industries and a special version was known as the 2000 MD, meaning Managing Director, which had special features such as knock-off wire wheels, triple Stromberg carburettors and the battery moved to the boot. Total production of the 2000 MD was approximately 100. Many of these cars are still on the road supported by owners' clubs and specialist parts. The 2000 and derivatives are also popular with modifiers owing to common parts and engines shared with other Triumph models such as the TR6, GT6 and Vitess. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to subscribe. Lucky losers! Oh lucky losers, oh lucky losers, lucky 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 loo. Oh lucky losers, oh lucky losers, lucky 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 loo. Oh lucky losers, oh lucky losers, lucky 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 loo. Oh lucky losers, oh lucky losers, lucky 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 loo. Cha cha cha.